Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the high grade Gunna Mage 2 Normal. So an age kit means this has been around for quite an age. This came out in 2012, so it has been around for nine years, and I have to say, there's something about the Gundam age kits. I feel like they changed so much, like it was a turning point for a high grade because this is so much better than I was expecting. But before we actually get into this review, are you feeling hungry? Name one thing fancier than premium Japanese snacks. How about eating premium Japanese snacks from a handmade Kiribako box? How about eating Japanese snacks in Japan? And speaking of which, have you ever wanted to travel to Japan for free? This video was sponsored once again by those snack masters over at Boxu, a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers original assortments of premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings. Boxu makes such a perfect and memorable gift for anyone in your life who appreciates Japanese snacks and culture, especially during a time where people aren't able to travel as easily as they would like. And actually, not only would you be gifting them Boxu, which is already awesome, but also you would technically be gifting them the chance to win free tickets to Japan, because Boxu is having a giveaway. They will be picking a lucky winner at random to win a free set of tickets, and anyone who is subscribed before December 31st is automatically entered. I'll include a link in my description so you can check out the terms and conditions and other methods of entry. And to make it even more awesome, before the 30th of December, you can order your own box soon and receive it in a special Kiribako wooden box. Lovingly handcrafted in Koga City, Japan by Matsuda Kiribako, and the gold foil design is exclusive to Boxu. How sharp does that look? So do you want free tickets to Japan? Use my code MECHA10 and the link in the description to become eligible to win the giveaway by subscribing to Boxu. My code will get you 10% off your subscription, so don't miss out on this unique opportunity, available for anyone who subscribes until December 31st. So jumping now into the overview of absolutely everything that comes inside of this box, and what we get is the high-grade Gundam Age 2 itself, we get a full stand, a part for parts forming this, when it comes to the weapons we've got the Dodds Rifle, a pair of Beam Sabers, a shield, and lastly we've got two alternate hands, not including the two attached. Now let's check out the aesthetics. So now jumping into the aesthetics with that full 360 degree spin, and like I've mentioned before, these age kits look phenomenal. These must have really set one hell of a precedent when they came out originally. The colors are fantastic, the build here is great as well. The only thing that has a little bit of an old school feel to it is all of the plastic has that kind of shiny finish, which was kind of the way plastic was back then. It almost looks like ABS, but it isn't. When it comes to the stickers, they are minimal and just on kind of shiny parts. And when it comes to the panel lining opportunities, there's quite a few while still keeping it anime accurate. This thing looks spectacular. Now, I will mention during the build, I did snip off the safety knobs, include the ones up on the wings. So that was one snip, and then I filed the rest off. Besides that though, this kit is straight built with a little bit of panel lining. So jumping on in for a bit of a closer look, and once again, this is such an epic design. What they did back with the Gundam Age designs is make them so clean, but so colorful at the same time. This is quite a simplified design, but it works in such a magnificent sort of way. The colors on here are phenomenal, they really do explode off the plastic model. The angles are incredible, the wings just add a great dynamic level to it, and I have to say, I just love the Age 2 normal. To me, that was the best arc of Gundam Age. On this kit we do have a few stickers, that is to be expected from a kit from 2012. So blasting through those stickers one at a time, right there at the top, ah, that is in the front of the head as the main head camera. Ooh, that is the rear head camera. Eh, there that is the big A or Gundam Age logo in the chest of the Age 2. E, those are two stickers either side of the main camera on the head. O and K, those are in the chest in the recessed segments inside of the yellow chest vents. The huge one there, Ku, these are in the top of the shoulders and the biggest color correcting stickers on this kit. Most of the time you cannot see these. You only see them in the transformation. Key, that is in the front of the Dodds rifle. And finally then K, that of course is for the eyes. So honestly I have to say this kind of blows me away that this is almost a decade old. Honestly it looks great and the head on this is phenomenal. The H2 has such a cool take on the traditional Gundam head. Especially that bit of a grey chin bit below the standard Gundam red beard. And honestly on the whole I absolutely love the look of this kit. So jumping back to the beginning of the video, and there is the high-grade Gundam Age 2 with absolutely everything that it comes with. 
So let's take a look at everything one by one. First off in here we do have a full action base. Now this is pretty cool. I will mention that throughout the review I've been using this one right here and you guys asked me about this well, quite a lot, so I'll mention it again. This is Good Smile Company's simple stand. It's a simple stand, it's clear, and the reason I mainly use it is because you can pose it any way that you want, so I can get the shots that I need for the video. As for the stand that comes with the kit, it is perfectly fine, it's just it's a display stand. Great for display, but I won't be able to get the shots I need with it, that's why I use the other one. However, this is one of the coolest included stands I have ever seen. One, there is storage here for using with the hands, you can store the excess hands, the two that you have extra, underneath it. So they're always with the kit. On top of that, you're able to take the included butt cover that usually covers the hole in the butt and attach that into the base. And you can also attach on the part that you use during the transformation to the flight form. So this can store the stuff that this kit comes with. That is such an excellent design. Bando should do this more. When it comes to the other accessories we have in here, first off is the hands. We've got two holding hands, and then something a little bit odd. We've got two alternate hands, but they're both for the left arm. We've got an alternate full fist that doesn't have a hole in it. It's just a fist for fisty poses, and we have a widespread dynamic open hand. These are both for the left hand, which means the right hand always has to be a holding hand, which is a bit of an odd decision. So when it comes to the weapons, the first thing we have in here is the pair of beam sabers with those typical age flat beams. I'm jumping over to the Gundam Wiki now to give you a bit of a blast about these, and what it says is, a sword-like beam weapon that is used for close combat. Like Gundam Age 1's, Gundam Age 2's beam sabers are strong enough to pierce and destroy the Vagans mass production mobile suits with a single stab. They can also emit a beam dagger from the bottom end, one can be used as a reserved weapon or both can be used simultaneously in a twin sword fashion. Now I will mention with this particular kit we've just got big beams so no beam daggers. Attaching these into the hands is super simple and the usual way, just pop it in like that and like that. And that is what they look like attached. Next up then here we've got the shield which is mounted on the left forearm. The H2 Normal's shield is small in comparison to those used by other mobile suits of the era and due to its small size the shield is extremely maneuverable and effective in close combat. The shield is in the same nice shades of color as the rest of the kit and around the back we do have a little bit of a pivoting attachment point in grey. That then just attaches into the peg on the back of the forearm just like so. Next in here we've got the Hyper Dodds Rifle. The basic ranged armament of the Gundam H2 Normal. It is developed from the Dodds Rifle and is twice as powerful. It can penetrate two mobile suits with one shot and forms the nose of the Strider mode. So this has some moving parts, this bit can pull in and out and flip to form the attachment for in strider mode. We've got this little bit that pulls on down like so, a little bit stiff, come on, there you go, just so it can fit into the hand and we've got a bit of a moving handle to angle it to get it into that hand. So in order to do that it just slips on in there, just like that, right there. So now moving on to the build and the articulation of the high grade Gundam Age 2 normal right here. And first off, I'll say this thing is built like a brick. Now I'm not sure what the particular plastic used on the grey on this is. It feels like ABS, but oh, wait, I'll just check the instructions. So it says here PS, so I assume that does mean polystyrene, but I'm not sure why this is so rough, rubbery and tough compared to what we see in kits nowadays. But it has resulted in a much tougher kit. At the neck we do have that full giggity 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 goo polycap neck so there's the head all the way up, all the way down, there's left, right that can go all the way around if you wanted to and the side to side tilt. Not bad. The shoulders here are not your typical high grade polycap so you're not going to be swapping too many parts with other kits here. We've got forward and back at this bit and what that gets us with the arm then is forward and back right here. Next up we do have the full 360 spin at the arm trying to raise it all the way up now and again that's not too bad with the amount that is going on up here. As for the shoulder wings they can pivot all the way forward up here and back on a peg. They can then rotate right here at this point, pivot in and out and the white wing here can move out and in just like so. These are extremely beautiful and dynamic. So simple but so awesome. Next up we've got that full 360 spin at the upper arm, there is the bend at the elbow, so two point bend, not too bad at all, and then the usual ball joint wrist. 
So the torso here is old school and pretty much fused in place. We have a polycap ball in here, which gets us a little bit of articulation here. So there's to the front, to the back, side, to side. So not too bad for just a ball. Front skirting armor is on a ball joint. You can snip that in half on the runner. Side skirting here is just up and down. No back and forward, except for this little fin section here. We've got our butt flap, so it's up and down. No, a little bit of side to side here. Inside the waist unit, we have a side to side moving hip joint segment. So there's the kick all the way up to the front. The kick out to the back is a little bit blocked. Can you move that butt flap out of the way a little bit? There you go, out to the back. And finally, as for those splits, no problem whatsoever. Next up then, we do have a full spin at the upper leg. A double jointed bend at the knee right there. Not too bad. The knee armor kind of just staying fixed up here. Does look a little on the odd side, but still not too bad. And finally then getting the foot in the ground to test out the full functional movement. So there it is all the way to the front. We have a bit of a moving armor piece here. There it is out to the back, quite blocked. And then there's the side. Whoa! Two side pivot. So yeah, nice side to side. Finally then we do have a toe that can point downwards like so. So once again, this is a great kit considering its age. The articulation on this is both solid and gives you pretty much anything you could ever want. Could be a little bit better at the waist, but considering just how dynamic and poseable these wings are, you'll always make sure this ends up in something over the top and dynamic. Once again, super impressed by this kit right here. So finally then moving on to the transformation to the Strider mode. So this kit does require a little bit of a parts formation. So you need to pull off the legs and remove this typical Gundam crotch segment and then replace it with this big wide one right here. Then you just pop on the legs, hit them with some of that Zeta Gundam style mangled leg action. As for transforming the torso, the instructions does suggest that you remove the arms first, pull down on the torso, which is such a nice little gimmick, pull down on the shoulders then so the head can depress into the body ever so slightly, then swing up the crotch segment like so and plug it into the back. This is so nice. Then you swing these side skirtings forward and I'm so glad these don't rotate. So that means they're always perfectly lined up when you flip them forward. That's cool. Next up, it's time to bring the Hyper Dodds rifle into the equation. This is a very simple yet intelligent transformation as well. You pull out this segment here and just reverse it around so it slides in all the way, flip up the handle, and then you close up this lower guard segment. Now this is ready to slot into the chest of the Strider and it fits in perfectly. No wiggle, no aligning to be done, it's just perfect. Now it's about time we stuck the legs back on, they just go where they came off before with a new crotch. Again, fits in perfect. When it comes to the arms, you just have to flip up a little bit of armor and then flip down the shoulder armor like so. Then you can align the wings the way they need to be. And on the left arm, if you want to attach the shield, remove the cuff segment, flip it around one segment just like so, pop the hand back on and then pop on the shield. Simple and effective once again. The last thing we need to do then is just stick on the arms like so, get that action base, pop it on like this, and you can actually swing the bottom of the action base around in order to use this with this kit while in the flight mode. Once again, this is a great little included base. Finally then, there's the 360 spin of what this looks like in its Strider mode. And I made a video before about the, was it the H2 Magnum SV? Saying that it is my all time favorite flight form. That is for multiple reasons. One, it looks fantastic. And two, in the high grade kit, it just works so well. And that, well, is down to this kit right here. This is probably the best high grade flight form around, in my opinion anyway. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this the best or what is better? The reason I like it is because it stays in place. There's nothing that really moves around and looks a bit wonky. There's nothing worse than transforming something and then a leg going cockeyed or a bit going funny or something leaning to the side a little bit the way you don't want it to. This just fits together and transforms into a nice shape that holds together and looks like a flight form while still looking like a transforming Gundam. It just makes so much sense. I love this flight form to pieces. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And if you told me this kit came out this year, you know, I would, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I would kind of assume that it did. The only thing that is a bit old school about this is the plastic that it's made out of. And it's, depending on your perspective, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. It's a little harder to work with and needs a little bit more cleanup. 
but when you do clean it up, it is so solid and holds perfectly. When it comes to the aesthetics, there's a couple of stickers on here. Mainly the big ones on the shoulders are the biggest letdown, but besides that, this looks phenomenal. The colors pop, the details look great, the geometry on this is very nice, and what the designers during age did is make something so appealing while it being so simple at the same time. Those are some of my favorite wings up there. When it comes to the accessories, you have everything you could want in here besides a pair of smaller beams for popping onto the beam savers. But besides that, it's all good. And lastly, when it comes to the build and the articulation, it is solid and you'll get every pose you want out of it. And it is a transforming kit. In my opinion, this is a good deal better than the Master Grade. The Master Grade has some janky legs that this does not have. So yeah, this ride here to me is a gold tier kit. And the only thing that makes it shy of being perfect and being platinum tier is a couple of color separation issues, a couple of hollow parts here and there, and a couple of little bits with the articulation. Like, it would be nice to see those knees move while the knees bend. But then again, it is a high grade and a damn fine one at that. You will not regret getting one of these if you do. If you love Gundam Age, love Gundam Age 2 normal, then you absolutely need this kit. It is so, so good. And again, this is my favorite high grade transformation around. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much to Boxu for supporting the channel by sponsoring this video. And as always, I will see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking those who support me here on the channel as members and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forseti, Joe, or G59061, and Gumpla UK Limited.